right, hey guys, welcome back to the Independent Investor Channel. It's great to be with you. Uh, sorry, I missed uh, last week's uh, highly on update. Uh, I enjoyed doing these wholeheartedly. I absolutely look forward to doing them. Uh, been pretty dry uh, on the news landscape here uh, as of late. Uh, I, I think it just speaks to that um, bridging uh, period that we're in right now. Uh, as we march toward uh, some inevitable milestones down the line here with uh, winter validations here, latter part of 2022, uh, as well as uh, approaching the uh, all uh, important uh, mass scale up and uh, look for commercialization as the fleet is going to be starting to take receipt uh, of their first uh, Hypertruck ERXs uh, back half of 2022 into 2023 uh, for the uh, fleet demos. It's going to be interesting to see how highly on um, captures that opportunity. Um, this is going to be a, a mirror image of what to be expected on a mass scale. The Hypertruck uh, Innovation Council has uh, uh, elected to be that uh, uh, test pool, uh, for a lack of better terms, uh, in taking receipt and, and entering them into their diverse operations uh, and the rigors that exist therein with uh, over-the-road trucking in the Class 8 space. For you guys that are new to the Hylion opportunity, uh, Hylion came uh, public via SPAC, which is special purpose acquisition. Uh, just um, It's been in public markets now for uh, 18 or so months, I guess, uh, all told uh, closer to about two and a half years since the initial SPAC process uh, beginning of 2020. Uh, and uh, I've been following it intently all, all the way through. I give you an elevator pitch on Hylion Holdings. Uh, Hylion was founded by Thomas Healy. It spurs all the way back uh, to his time at uh, Carnegie Mellon. He's a, an engineer by trade, uh, race car driver. A lot of the information and history can be provided uh, or can be found on Hylion.com, but uh, you'll need to piece together uh, some information there on some of the legacy Hylion videos. And, and Thomas really just had an idea about how to make the Class 8 trucking space uh, more economical for fleets. It's just that simple. And fleets for a long, long time, if you've covered the space, have been hungry for um, these uh, transitions. And the uh, technologies that have come to the forefront has been uh, full electric vehicles, uh, plugging into the grid. Uh, it has been uh, the hydrogen fuel cell initiative spearheaded by companies the like of Nikola and Hyzon Motors, uh, which is uh, fantastic. They've done a great job in advancing the science uh, and the technology there uh, in, in providing a viable option, both uh, here uh, domestically and abroad, especially for Hyzon Motors uh, in the hydrogen fuel cell category. And then you have uh, companies like Hylion, uh, that are taking a unique approach, no doubt about it. They are a powertrain solutions provider. They do not build semi-trucks. Um, they are looking to uh, keep the majority of the truck intact uh, and looking for those um, really uh, outdated <laughs> systems, for a lack of better terms, the, the, diesel, uh, the diesel engine, the, the, the drivetrain, and just, just redesigning a smarter uh, drivetrain type of application here, uh, up the, the powertrain and integrating where Hylion um, feels like is the most need. Um, do we need to redesign an entire truck? Hylion would say no. Um, do we need to um, focus in on those uh, fuels now that don't exist with current infrastructure? Uh, Hylion would say no. In this video, I'm going to touch on some of the resources that you can uh, uh, find your way to, uh, some of the resources that I find to be the best on uh, Hylion and the information that exists on the company, company updates, et cetera. So if you're interested in that, uh, you can actually follow along. Uh, for full disclosure, I am a stock owner in the company. Um, it's just that simple. Um, for full disclosure, hell, I'll tell you, I own 12,100 shares of the company I have ever since the beginning. Um, I've lowered my cat cost average over the last 18 months. Uh, I did invest in the company when it was a SPAC. Um, I've sold the company twice, just for full disclosure. Um, and for you guys that are interested in my unique perspective on this, uh, don't judge. That's just me. Uh, that's what I do. Uh, I'm a little bit more um, non-apologetic with my stock application. And I think that's the way a lot of people should be. Uh, there's no doubt about it. You want to own the stock? Great. If not, no big deal. Um, I'd like you to take this as an awareness 
to emerging technology in the industry. I cover the space pretty intently. Uh, and if there's something out there that I don't know about, uh, it surprised me. So I come on every week and I share my perspectives on progress being made at Hylion and, and, and feel like um, you know, this right now presents a, a very intriguing opportunity uh, for a company that is looking to revolutionize the class eight space uh, and, and assist and partner with industry who I feel like is a lot more hungry than uh, a lot of people would like to report and, and therefore uh, speak about the EV opportunity as being way too far disconnected from that opportunity, uh, I beg to differ. I think industry is really hungry. And I think Hyleon has been presented with a few headwinds since being introduced to public markets. I mean, hell, let's just tell it like it is. It's been atrocious. Headwinds have been atrocious with a global pandemic uh, not adding to it, with a geopolitical uncertainty, with the conflict um, uh, abroad now, and with supply chain issues. And I've seen some social media posts come through that would absolutely say that all of that's bullshit. And I'm here to tell you it's not. It's it's very, very real. Um, Hylion's had a tough go of it. I think something that is really, in all fairness, is, has um, allowed the stock price to suffer uh, is that highly on number one was caught up in the SPAC debacle. Uh, 95% of the stocks uh, that came via SPAC now in the public marketplace are have lost money. Um, it, and I think Hylion uh, is in that camp. It's it's one of those 95, anybody who's invested in this company know it's been a hard go of it. Um, investing in a company like Hylion is not like investing in a company like Procter & Gamble. It's not. Um, but I think uh, Hylion as of now on the onset was given a lot of hype credit and now to the downside, it has been equally as bad to the downside in that the market doesn't know where to value this company. It's sitting on a war chest of capital of about 400, 585,000 of cash, cash equivalents, long and short-term investments. So it's cash, cash position is fabulous. Um, they've garnered a lot of interest within industry with their product. They've developed their product. They've brought one to marketplace so far. Um, they need to enter into over the coming months, and I earmark about 20 months toward that end uh, on their flagship product, the Hypertruck ERX, um, which is a full electric truck solution specific to the powertrain that allows the company to fuel an onboard generator uh, that fuels the, uh, that powers or charges the generator as the truck is moving down the road. The batteries power the drivetrain, the rear axles. Uh, dual axles on the Hypertruck ERX that actually propel uh, the vehicle down the road provides a, a, an, an enormous amount of horsepower, um, a huge amount of horsepower, 600 on the last check that I saw. Um, there was some despairing uh, 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 figures that were thrown out there. We're probably talking about 600 horsepower here, guys, with the dual axles with a thousand miles of range, which just blows the competition out of the water. And I think if I were going to speak to the hunger of the um, fleets out there that are looking at the total cost of ownership over time, Hylion's got some things to prove. And we'll talk about this and some of the catalysts that need to happen over time as we look to validate this product and make sure that it can get the, to that seven year on the minimum and 10 year payback to the fleets. If they can't do seven years on the minimum, uh, this company will not exist. They will not provide the bottom line benefit. The companies are not gonna opt for new technology if they can't guarantee that the uh, product is going to be reliable and durable over that time frame. insofar as deriving bottom line benefits to the fleets if they can say, look, we can guarantee that the Hypertruck ERX is gonna last eight and a half years. Now that's a figure that we can look and draw bottom line benefits on running either C and G uh, in the tanks to power the onboard generator that I spoke about uh, and even better renewable natural gas, which as of late has been extremely, extremely bullish to take what it is, is being off gas to the atmosphere and providing that as a viable fuel source to use through existing infrastructure uh, to put to our transportation system. And a lot of people might ask, well, why, Ryan? Why is it a big deal? Um, I get my goods. You know, Walmart seems to have no problem with the semi trucks pulling into the back of Walmart. And the sheer answer to that is very, very simple. And it's a twofold answer. The trucking industry is the number one polluter on the earth. I will say it again. The trucking industry is the number one polluter on the earth. 
trucking industries know this. These are not bad people that make up these enormous organizations. Trucking is the number one most perverted method of transporting our goods on a day-to-day -day basis. It is the lifeblood of providing transportation from point A to point B. These companies know this, and they understand their obligation now to start to entertain where technology is now and where it could potentially take them into the future. So your question as an investor has to be, who is best positioned to sit across from the table and deliver the bottom line TCO? And I think highly on, I could make the pitch. I know enough about this company. I could do it myself. I do it every week for you guys. I am just a lone voice on YouTube for whatever that means. Um, I don't put a lot of stock in my own application. I just come on and I deliver this uh, it, it, through the lens that I see it to be the most prudent and the most applicable to shareholders out there. But th those companies that are going to be versed to sit across and provide these fleets that option to go more green is not only coming on one front from the fleets itself, but it's coming from the customers themselves. Customers want to be called upon and aligned with those businesses that are taking an initiative to help protect the planet. If you have a black eye of an industry that is the number one polluter in this, in this world, and there are absolutely positive uh, repercussions uh, or acknowledgements for these companies that opt to go green, everybody's going to fall in line, guys. If you don't think that that is the case, you would be wrong and you would be sleeping at the wheel, no pun intended, on this particular topic. The question is, who's going to win the business? Is it going to be legacy fleets like Cummins? Is it going to be Volvo Penta? Is it going to be the OEMs that uh, side with uh, different companies and certain companies out there um, that are looking to make these products available on a mass scale. Nikola is choosing to take its own path and becoming its own OEM, basically, and its own assembly line along the lines of what Tesla has done in that they create everything in-house. Hyzon, same idea. Hylion is taking a different approach in that they're looking to partner with the OEMs and provide that opportunity to the OEM's customers to allow for the product to be installed off of the OEM line. So just a different approach. Where we're going into the future is, is really anybody's guess or anybody's bet at this point. I think the stars are aligning in such a way for Hylion to be somewhat exciting over the future. Nobody can tell the future. What I find interesting in the social media landscape is that a lot of people are trying to imply that they know one way or the other based on past performance, where a specific company or even a stock is going to go into the future. I, I've also gone so far as to identify some folks that I've really had, and I still have a lot of respect for them. Great, great people. And, and Paul is one of them. Paul is retracted from doing highly on content. It's totally up to him. And, and, and I, I understood his, his rationale personally, um, even though I totally disagreed with you know, the amount of awareness that was being provided on this topic, let's just take Hylion out of the equation for a little bit. And here's the thing, Paul, nor me, nor any other social media content creator out there needs to answer to anybody. And, and, and that's what I felt like was a little bit of a, an exit stage left. And, and I was disappointed by the news. I, I respect his decision. He's a grown man. He can do whatever he wants. And especially as a content creator, I absolutely don't get into that whole back and forth. But I'm if I'm going to be uh, um, um, constructively critical, I, I think the landscape suffers a little bit from uh, the lack of opinion out there. And, and I don't care what you think of me. I don't care about what you think of other uh, social media content creators out there. But unfortunately, I think that the sentiment that is surrounding the stock right now it is driving some of these and it overshadows some of the initiatives and some of the vision. And, and will, will those visions come true? Is their vision to be a dominant player in the class eight space going to come to a, a, a reality? We don't know. <laughs> and that's the thing is I don't, I don't operate uh, in, in a capacity to presume whether or not I know one way or whether or not Hylian is going to go left or right. I don't know. It's anybody's guess. If nothing else over the last couple of years, it's proven some of the headwinds that can be dealt to some of these small companies are, are in some cases insurmountable. 
um, the short selling interest has started to uh, come off of Hylion. And it's been a real bear on Hylion's back. It's been a real anchor. No doubt, it certainly does not help when you have a, a, an over 20% uh, short share float out there, which drives down the sentiment. But I'm going to talk a little bit about the stock directly here uh, it, it, as, as where it sits right now. And I just don't think there's a lot of news uh, outside of myself. Um, you got Bloodhound uh, investing and you got RP Music uh, as well that's doing some good and the Wall Street engineer, uh, as well as my friend Jason uh, with JMAC Investing, who uh, just as of late went down to uh, the Hylion facility and got to drive in the Hypertruck. That to me was invaluable. It was invaluable. Um, you know, somebody that I knew, somebody that I trusted. I've never met Jason in person, but I know him through social media, and that's good enough for me. Uh, and and it, for, to see him in, in the driver's seat of that, uh, I, I believe that if he thought that it was a bad experience, he would have he would have said, you know, he would have reached out to me and said, Ryan, this this it was clinking and clunking, and it was making all kinds of noise. And I tell you, the diesel truck was much more enjoyable. And I, I think when I, when I come back to, to my disappointment, I think in some of these uh, channels uh, that in, in my uh, assessment is like throwing in the towel, um, I, I think you're missing some of those um, monumental achievements to a company that just hasn't been around that long. And I've heard comments come through Twitter, which I feel like is just about as invaluable as the scum uh, behind my teeth, to be honest with you. I just despise Twitter all, altogether. And I just think for people who come out and say that Thomas Healy isn't doing his job, define what it is that you think Thomas Healy needs to do more of. And that I might have more respect for, but to say that somehow he's not doing his job or a comment that I saw this week come through Twitter and I, I just cringe every now and then, it's not even entertaining to me anymore, is that Sherry Baker needs to provide her salary back because there are no earnings to report. That's somebody who probably has not sat and listened to Sherry Baker deliver her uh, quarterly reports with ease and elegance, with as good a profession as I've ever seen in the industry. And I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to boost anything up. I, I really just have that much um, um, acknowledgement to how good and how val valuable both Sherry and Thomas are to the company. And Thomas Healy is the founder CEO of the company. He's not going anywhere. OK, and whether or not you think he's doing a bad job or not, whether you think Sherry Baker needs to give her salary back, <laughs> she's a CFO uh, of, of, a, of a multi hundred million dollar company, you know, a three quarter uh, um, seven hundred fifty million dollar company. She doesn't have to give anything back. She's doing a great job. Uh, and she's also providing a lot of those things that behind the scenes, that tip of the iceberg report that she gives on the quarterlies. That's easy. That's easy for her, um, but her strategic oversight of the uh, expansion of the facilities, um, the strategic insight and, and, and uh, input on new project initiatives, um, the strategic insight and um, 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 opportunity to provide and weigh in on how much R&D is put out there, the, the managing of the CapEx at the company, I, I really think that's somewhat short-sighted. Uh, and, and I think it does detract from the conversation. So you can see a spectrum there of some of the comments that are just out, outlandish, which speak to a lot of people's lack of intelligence, to be honest with you. I hate to be rude, but I really don't, actually, because a lot of these comments are just plain stupid. And then some of these other comments that, uh, although there were a lot of things that I valued with the opinion, a lot that I disagreed with, but when, when is it that we couldn't just sit across from, when did we lose the ability to sit across from people and just agree to disagree, not get pissed off, not say, hey, this is a bad person or, or a good person or, hey, they're right on or, hey, I disagree with that. So therefore, I hate them. I don't understand that because this is a conversation worth having. It really is. <clears throat> I think the direction of where we go with the planet is worth having. And this is some of the where I thought some of the deeper um, vision and the deeper meaning behind the message in Paul's message specifically spoke to providing awareness through a conduit through social media. He said he didn't enjoy it anymore. And that, that, that kind of stung a little bit for me because it's like, man, I, I, I cannot relate with that. Um, I enjoy sharing my highly on story. I enjoy sharing my, my ability. I, 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 I love that. I don't want to wear this because I don't want to get it dirty. I'm saving my, my Hylion shirt, man. I, I value 
uh, being called upon with highly on. And, you know, it's for the same reason that I, that I don't necessarily come on here and talk about Altria group every week, right? It's just two different schools of thought. And I think from a broader perspective, the awareness and the technology, and he's quick to talk about how much he's behind the technology. Well, if they can leverage this technology in such a matter to integrate in a small capacity to the fleets, every truck, one truck at a time is a step in the right direction. And it is a radical step in the right direction. There's statistics, and I don't uh, bring it to, to, to my mind right away. It's in the uh, original investor presentation, which discusses how many metric tons of carbon are being removed from the atmosphere with every integration of the Hypertruck ERX. Guys, that's, that's powerful stuff. And, you know, I, maybe I'm off. You know, a lot of people come on and they're like, Ryan, you need to admit when you're wrong. No, I don't. Get out of my knickers. I'm, I'm perfectly fine. Um, you, you should try just, I don't know, maybe finding a little bit of strength in yourself instead of trying to pick fun at other people, man, and, and especially picking fun when they're down. Um, I'm down in this company, just like everybody else. Um, there's nobody that's, that's not, not down in the company. Uh, nobody has invested in this company in public markets uh, outside of the private placement before it came public that is not down on the company. What does it mean? Does it mean that you have to throw in the towel? Does that mean that you have to automatically draw up presumptions about the company going out of business a month from now or never having the ability to scale up their, their production? Because what? Because you perceive that there's lack of information on the landscape. And two of the channel creators that I had some respect for, I, I really do. And, and to each his own, I respect their decision about moving off. Um, I, I'm the ambassador of Highly on uh, every week. I, there, there's nobody that's put more content out. And that's including Jason. And good for him. He's branched off and he's done some other things. He's busy with his sport cards. This is what I want to do right now. Okay. This is what I want to advocate for. And I, I'd be hard pressed to say that there's uh, another channel creator out there through YouTube that is electively doing as much content as I am. Uh, I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I just don't see it. I don't see it. Uh, and I place myself in that position. Why? Because it feels right. It feels right to provide that awareness to people, stock owners out there, folks looking at the this EV space, especially the class eight, uh, which is a niche industrial technology space. It's fascinating what they're doing. Fascinating with the ability. And I was driving to work the other day and I saw Pinsky, Idealese, Ryder, and Werner all right behind each other. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, I went to vacation this week and I saw Wegmans, excuse me, not Wegmans, Werner, Ryder, Penske, same. Every time I go out there, I'm like, these are some large fleets that Hylian has partnered with through the Innovation Council. And I think Hylian is, it's, it's really difficult to put your thumb on because they've got a lot of moving pieces right now that need to align in way of catalysts. And that's why I think over the next coming months, the bridge to, from now to that mass scale up and the awarding of those build slots by the OEMs uh, will be uh, of interest to me as we enter into the back half of 2023. And we're just going to have to put this opportunity on ice. And, you know, being upset from week to week and, and, and throwing in the towel one week and one week, I'm not going to talk about it. And, and, and then I start talking about it every day again. And, and then I'm not going to talk about it really does kind of give the impression that, that, that there's a little bit of a wishy-washy application. And that's the part that I, I, I don't really understand. I don't really understand what the intent is. My intent is very, very clear. Uh, my intent is not to pump the stock. I don't even know what that means. I've done company profiles on companies that have lost 75% of their value. Um, I don't believe that the influence over social media has, has that much of an impact on. I, I know there's schools of thought who would put it in a box and say, it's pumping the stock. Stock's going to do what the stock is going to do. I know this because I witness it firsthand, okay? I don't do this to pump the stock, nor do I, I don't work for Hylion either. They don't pay me to put this content on, you know? And I, I do it willingly, willingly just to educate because I do have um, an, an insight and a conviction about this opportunity that into the future, uh, Hylion is going to be well positioned to take a, a, a meaningful chunk. And we're looking at one to 2%. 
one to 2% is not meaningful. Okay. One to 2%, we are talking about significant impact. And the question is, how are they going to get from where they are now, which is zero percent penetration? They've got reservations and they've got orders that are secured by deposits, et cetera, et cetera. But they have zero market penetration, zero. Okay. As they start to turn out those units to the fleets and the fleets start to uh, 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 obligate themselves, which we've had a few obligations prior to fleet trials, which tells me uh, a lot about how excited these companies are. They take one test drive of the Hypertruck ERX and they're sold. If that type of interest, and by Thomas Healy's admission, that interest is as strong as he says that it is, um, it's going to be very interesting when the availability of build slots comes available to the fleets and they're jockeying for position to make sure that they can have uh, those build slots secured with their name in front of it. Okay. But from zero penetration to one or 2%, 2% penetration in this market, we're talking about $100, $120 stock here. Okay. That, that's the numbers that we're talking about. So when, when people want to focus on the zero, focus on the zero, zero, zero market penetration, anemic revenue, 200 million, uh, 200,000 this year, two to 3 million projected for 2022, moving into 2023, where are those projections going to lie with the deposits and, and the hyper DX continuing to sell uh, and the, and the hyper truck ERX? at about 30 to $40,000 of profit per unit to the bottom line. As we start to scale up and we're doing hundreds of orders, maybe even thousands of orders approaching that critical mass of 5,000 units, where are we going to be then when we actually have some uh, quantifiable metrics to award to the company as these fleets are starting to introduce it? And we step toward that 1% to 2% of market penetration for Hylion. That's going to be the key. So if, if I give you just my insight as a, as a stock investor, I don't own Hylion exclusively, okay? I have hundreds of thousands of dollars in other places, passive investments, dividend uh, stocks. I, I have a little bit in crypto. I'm invested in a very, very holistic portfolio. And that I think is what separates me from the masses as well is the, the, the dominant portion of my portfolio is comprised of a value investing type of perspective. That's why I don't come on and I don't apologize. People are like, you're going to lose everything. No, I'm not. If people stop buying Tide, that's going to be much more problematic than if the Hylion solution is slow to be integrated by the market and they don't do it in 2024 and they do it in 2026. For me, I'm going to be around no matter what, because I think inevitably this solution with the hunger that I talked about on behalf of the industry and behalf of the demand from the said customers that I discussed at the onset of the program, that right there is going to be an inevitable alignment of the stars for Hylion and make them well positioned to take what it is right now with a prototype product the Hypertruck ERX, which is in, inter, going to enter into its final sta stages of validation, winter testing, uh, MIPSA and uh, 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 EPA approvals uh, for over the road, right? Uh, as well as uh, the fleet demos and trials for final uh, validation. They want to make sure that they get this thing right. And we're 21 short months away from that. If you think that that's too long to invest, I've heard some schools of thought to say, why wouldn't you just wait? If that's what you want to do, no problem. Don't come back to me and bitch. When this thing jumps overnight to $12 and you're stuck looking at a company that you knew, that you knew had the potential for the stars to align. You knew had the potential to sit across from industry and deliver a bottom line TCO that did not compare with any other company out there. We are in that opportunity right now. Do not come back to me. And, 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 and want to say, I should have, I should have done this, or I told you this, or I told you that, because like I said, I'm one of the very few voices on social media that's telling me you at least need to give it a look. Now is not the time to be throwing in the towel. That type of loser's mentality is not something that I abide by. It's, it's a loser's mentality in that I, I I'm not going to give up on this. No way. I, I just, I don't look at it that way. I don't, I don't look at it that way. I look at it very, very simple. For the seconds and the minutes that I'm on providing awareness to Hylion, it is, is time well spent as far as I'm concerned. And I'm going to continue to do it. 
And when we enter into something other than a very low sentiment stage, it's going to be a lot more enjoyable to do, but is it going to be that much more enjoyable then that it is now for me to, to operate under the same thesis that the world needs this solution? And companies and, and, and customers, they understand this. And the general public is demanding it. And the second that the government steps on board and starts to provide some incentive, once these products are available and Hylion can step forward and say, our product is ready, it's ready to go. We need to uh, win more build slots with multiple OEMs, not just Peterbilt, right? Uh, and when they can say that, it's going to be the floodgates that I think break, break, break through. And Hylion is just premature of that end right now. They are not in that stage. And I think in all fairness to Hylion, a lot of people are demanding things that are not possible right now from this young company. They've set the milestones in place over the coming 21 months of bridging period for them to get these major milestones out of the way. And they are major. Winter testing is a big deal. They have to make sure that the product can withstand the rigors of, uh, of uh, the cold, and the uh, uh, rigorous demands over the Class A vehicles and the colder applications, they need to make sure that they can meet their MIPSA uh, certifications, and they need to make sure that the fleets are going to be able to provide that feedback back to Hylion. They've said since the beginning that this is what they wanted to do. They did not want to be that company that came out like Nikola and said, here's our product, take it or leave it. It's going to be our way or the highway. We've been doing trucking for all of three years and we're the experts and you said trucker need the solution to clean up the environment and you're going to do it our way without any opportunity for feedback. Now I'm presuming a little bit there, but on the onset, that's what it appears to be from Nicola. It appears to be, here's our solution, take it or leave it. It's going to be our way or the highway. Hylion does not approach this that way. They certainly don't. With the initiatives, with the, the major feedback that we've received from a lot of the major fleets out there, it's very, very apparent that Hylion wants to win over a customer for the long term and partner with industry on their step and bridge to electrification within the Class 8 space. That's something that I can get behind. The approach that Nikola is taking is not one that I can get behind. And that's just me personally. You guys out there that are talking about Nikola to the moon, et cetera, et cetera, I hope it does for you. That's great. I do not have conviction on that opportunity. This one, I do. Some of the resources out there that I'd like to foot stomp a little bit. Uh, the Hylion Discord, shout out to the Hylion Discord. I don't spend every day in there. Uh, I go in there around earnings call. I just don't have the time for it. The folks understand that this is their bridge and link. Um, I, I, I openly advocate for the Discord group. If you're into uh, back and forth discussion, all kinds of great information on there. Um, they do a great, great job in, in providing that information to uh, would-be investors, investors alike, or anybody that's just interested in a basic uh, conversation about the company. You don't have to have stock owner to join the Discord uh, group. Uh, there's a stat that all, all, a pretty uh, sizable float is represented uh, in the Discord group there. And uh, I'm a member. It's no problem. I don't frequent it very often. I do my own thing with my own opinion. Uh, but the, the Discord group is good. And then finally, what I feel like is the best resource for Hylion uh, is Hylion.com. I, I think their website just having, uh, I've watched it evolve and um, improve since they've come public. And it is, it is a wonderful, wonderful website. And to be able to kick over there and find out the latest updates, news releases, et cetera, on the company, very, very important. Uh, for you. So those are two resources. If you're interested in uh, the highly on opportunity, I encourage you to kick over there and, uh, and check them out. You'll uh, learn up on the two products that they have right now and what applications or niches they are looking to fill with, with each of those solutions. Uh, the stock right now trading about $3.80 at the time of filming this video. Uh, sentiment I uh, earmark is extremely low. Um, I still have a price target of twenty four dollars. It's awesome how much hate I get through social media uh, by saying that this this company is a twenty four dollar company. There's certain things that need to align. If they end up getting half of the projected sales to meet that critical mass of four to five thousand units, so two to twenty five hundred units is going to put this stock probably well north of fifty. 
So my $24 price target is just below that $50 mark. Very simple, very simple, simple math. They've got to do 125 to 135 to hit that critical mass, 135 million uh, for uh, uh, meeting their costs and expenditures per year. They can do 5,000 split up per quarter. You can start to identify what they need to do per quarter as they start to integrate and step into mass scale. Now, I think they can do it domestically. I think they can, and I think they will. And then once the company goes global, you're talking about another double up from there, which gets us at about $100, $125. You're talking about a $16 to $20 billion company at that point. Okay. So talking about it here at $750 million, a lot of the company's opportunity is being judged right now at 750. That's big thinker stuff, guys. I, I, I understand that a lot of you guys will say, you're wrong, Ryan, it'll never get there. No problem. You're entitled to your opinion, but I'm entitled to mine as well. And this is just how I see it shaping up. So a lot of people will say $24, you're, you're terrible. Well, what's your justification then? Is your justification that it'll never reach $24? because the stock is trading at $3.80, that to me is an escape to thinking. And it's an application that I just don't buy in, okay? The company is not the stock and the stock is not the company. It's just that simple. That applies not only to Hylion, but any other company. And the sentiment is low. So there is no, there's no surprise here as to why the company is being priced right against its cash liquidation value. It's being given credit for no proprietary uh, opportunity through their technology. It's given no credit at all for the orders reserved and orders uh, on the books with back by deposits. It's given no credit to the fleet wide diversity that they have across multiple fleets and what that opportunity could mean. Q4 call identified five new players in the hybrid space representing 500 trucks. People just breeze over that like it doesn't matter. Bulls like myself are like, it matters and it will matter. Doesn't matter now. Should I throw in the towel because the stock is trading at $3.80 when I know and I pick up on that stuff? And as a, an, an acute of a, an investor IQ as I have to not pick up on that stat and just discredit it. Now, could the world come to an end and Hylion cease to realize its vision for the future to be a dominant player in the class eight space? Sure, anything's possible. This is not an exact science. I find it interesting, those people who think that it is. This is investing. And I double down on this all the time. This is investing. You want to think really, really hard about it? It's not going to work. You want to try to come up with justifications in your mind as to why things are the way that they are at the time that you're making the analysis? None of that matters. Stock market investing takes a very, very unique application. Well, you're a bad investor because you're down on a stock. Let me tell you guys, I'll give you some insight. I've been down a lot of times. And my very perseverance through those down times and going from very, very deep water with a lot of different companies out there has been the very measure of my success as an investor. Am, am I in it now in deep water? Sure. I've lowered my cost basis. I've done everything I've needed to do. I'm still good. I, I'm, I'm better now than I was before. And that's the irony that I feel like a lot of investors feel like they've got it worse now when in actuality, looking at it in the opposite, there's no news on Hylion right now. That's a good thing. The stock is trading against its 52-week low right now. A lot of people are negative. I think that should be a positive, right? Making your decisions based on a $3.80 stock price right now is not correct. You should be making your decisions to the positive and saying, wow, this is a prolonged buying opportunity. Now, could we be completely wrong on this opportunity? Yes, but define wrong. Is the stock going to be $3.80 next year? Let's just say that it is. Then I'm wrong. Am I? Good for you. I'll pat you on the back if that's what you want. See, a lot of people, it seems like they want to self-fulfill their own prophecy and presumptions about people. Me, I could give two shits about what you do. I, I just don't care. I spend very little of my time understanding what it is that you do. Now, there's a few highly on investors that I absolutely do respect their opinion. And if they said something to me, I would listen. 
There's no doubt about it. But for the masses that, that seem to want to have me chalked up because they sit across from a YouTube video and they've, they've got me licked, you don't have me licked, okay? I understand me. I don't expect you to understand me and don't expect me to understand you. In all fairness, it, this is investing, okay? And I try my very best to revolve around this definition, which is very, very complex for a lot of people to understand. A lot of people just deserve to make money and spend money and retire broke. That's what a lot of people deserve. You want to know why? Because a lot of people don't understand or even take the first slightest second to understand investing, to understand what it requires. What does it require to enter into VOO, the Vanguard's S&P 500, as opposed to entering into a single stock like Johnson & Johnson on the value side of the house, a dividend king, right? As opposed to what it takes to invest in an opportunity like this. This is the top of the iceberg for me as an investor. It doesn't get any better than this. It doesn't get any better. So, so the contrast that I'm trying to, to, to aim at is this for me is the big leagues. This is the opportunity of a lifetime for me. It's the top of the iceberg. I give no guarantee that it's going to work out next year. I give no guarantee that it's going to work out in two years or five years. What I am guaranteeing is that I will be there for the look in 2023. I will be there for the look in 2024. Is it going to be at 380? I don't know. I just said, I don't know, but will I be there to provide me that opportunity for the look? Yes, I will. I absolutely will. So $24 on the price target the catalyst. I feel like from now until then is for the sales team to continue to build out, solidify the order book. Just that simple. Get the orders secured with uh, backed deposits against the order slots that Peter built is willing to elect. I threw this out to Thomas Ely directly through Twitter. And of course, no reply. He, he's blocked me, I'm sure. Um, he doesn't get my stuff. And I, I don't even think uh, Thomas Ely uh, monitors his own thread. I think his media team does that. I, I think they've uh, black sheeped the independent investor channel, which is uh, ironic uh, to say the least. Um, I provide more awareness content than really a lot of people out there on social media for highly on. And the majority of my stuff is right on the money, whether it be from a bull perspective or a bear perspective. But my question was, how many slots is Peter built going to be willing to give to highly on every year? The phenomenal question. Um, if I had him sitting next to me, I'd ask him now, um, I'd take a drink of my tea and then I'd ask him because I, for one, again, I contend not to put people on a pedestal. I don't do that. Um, if Thomas Healy wanted to answer that question, he could have, but perhaps maybe it's proprietary, maybe it's secret, maybe they're still working out those details with Peter Bilt. Um, is it a thousand? That's disappointing. Um, is it 4,000? That's exciting. Is it 2,000? Somewhere in the middle. It is what it is, right? We don't know. Is it going to be 150? That's pretty anemic and that's not going to work. And that's the way I pose the question. If we've got 150 that are reserved for 2024, then what comes next? Are you asking those questions? Is your CRM giving you forecasts about what you need to keep the business afloat? I'm sure that it is, right? So those questions are, are very, very viable uh, in getting from that zero to that four to 5,000 units sold. And if Peterbilt can only elect 1,500 or a lot 1,500 to Hiling on, well, then they've got some more work to do. They ought to be uh, knocking on uh, Volvo Pinto's door. They ought to be knocking on, um, on Kenworth, you know, and, and a lot of these other OEMs international. They need to be knocking on their doors to make sure that they can uh, at least get to that four to 5,000, which is the break-even catalyst. If they can get to that, this company will survive. If they can break even for, for even a few years, if from 2024 to 2027, they do nothing but walk toward that break even, we're talking about a $50, $60, $70 stock at that point. Even at break even, they don't have to make a dime. They don't have to make a dime. They're reinvesting in their business anyway. But the, the ability to maintain that order book and maintain that steady order flow is going to be the key for Hyleon. And it's going to be the catalyst 
uh, that absolutely is going to be on my mind. Is it going to happen next year? Probably not. So throwing in the towel right now makes no sense to me. None. Okay. Uh, will it happen into the future? I think it's going to be a slow, monotonous process. So if you're not in for that, um, I would jump ship now. Throw in the towel if that's what you want to do. You can stop bitching at me all the time. No problem. I'm not going anywhere. Come back to me in two years. I'll still be here. No problem. Open door policy. No love lost, baby. No love lost. All right. I care about your success more than you do. I do. And I'm just trying to help you. That's it. That is my sheer intent. Providing awareness on an opportunity that in five years, a lot of people are going to look at and they're going to say, damn, I had it right there in front of me. And I had the independent investor guy, Ryan, putting a cherry on top every single week for me. I had it right there. I could taste it. Why didn't I buy 100 shares? Why? Why, why, why? Why didn't I? I regret. Why should? Why didn't I? We all have those in life. This is one of them. Corporate ownership over the stock right now sits at Vanguard at 6.3% total ownership. Over the share float, uh, Coal Capital comes in at a respectable second place at 5.5% total share ownership. And my favorite, BlackRock, woohoo, uh, coming in third at 5.1% of the share float. Job filling is coming along. It's a sign of a growing company. This is a bullish sentiment, that of which the company right now gets zero credit for. And it is something that I wish more people would talk about. Uh, I've got people in my group who track this exclusively. And shout out to Dave for doing that for me. He provides it for me. I can't be everywhere at the same time. And he does a great job, man. His due diligence is uh, uh, much more penetrating below the surface than mine is. Uh, it's fabulous. Uh, and that only helps to provide uh, those multiple stars that are out there. And then when they do come together, you're going to have to have people to do the job, guys, to run the company, right? So if the company was firing people and laying people off, then it would be problematic. They are not doing that. Is now the time to throw in the towel? Probably not. They've grown to 200 workers. Some of these positions, these are not small potatoes. Some of these positions that they're looking to fill is big. I will earmark the technology committee that was uh, formed just last year in 2021, headed up by Mary Gostansky, who is with Delphi. She's the perfect person to lead this fight. Uh, so uh, pr providing that strategic arm uh, for Hylion in the technology committee and bridging the gap on how the technology is going to be integrated into the fleets that they're eventually going to uh, provide their solution to. So I, I found that to be very, very interesting. Segment of the show that I want to throw out there just for fun is going to be Thomas Tips. Uh, these are some Thomas Tips. And what uh, Thomas is a, well, he's a billionaire, right? Multi-millionaire, got a few hundred million. He's, he's lost a few hundred million with Hylion. Um, no problem. I, he's fine. He's fine. He's tough. He's a tough guy. And I think he's got a little sense of humor too. I think if he had more of a sense of humor, um, he would have watched my highly on video where he was there in cardboard. Uh, and I interviewed him because he didn't want to come on my channel. That was funny. Uh, but I have three things. I have three things. And in all fairness, these are three things that I wish he would improve upon, uh, do without, calm down a little bit on. Thomas Healy does not have a vast uh, amount of experience as a CEO. I think he's more than capable. I think he's a very smart guy. I think he's learning the job. And I think his potential uh, in this role as the founder CEO, I think his potential is through the roof. I think he's going to be a better CEO. Uh, I think the scrutiny that he receives right now is somewhat laughable. Um, when you look at some of the other CEOs out there in the same space uh, that can do no wrong, they can do no wrong. They can sell as much as they want. They can puff as much as they want. They can say whatever they want. They can get into hawk with the SEC as much as they want. And they're provided all the amnesty that they want. It's just lovely. Thomas Healy's a good guy. <laughs> He's a good guy. Here's my Thomas tips. Stop talking down on the hybrid EX. Okay, please. Um, I've heard multiple interviews, and I don't know if it's by nature of the habit forming of the uh, prepared remarks and his trying to stay in a box. But seemingly, there's two things going on. Sherry Baker says two to three million in revenue for 2022. And those revenues are going to be garnered by the Hybrid EX product. 
The Hybrid EX product has provided a million miles of road validation. The Hybrid EX is a viable product in the industry. If I'm looking to upgrade my fleet of 10 and I don't want to go full electric because of my routes being subject to C and G, then the hybrid product is perfect for me. It's perfect, provides more horsepower, provides fuel savings to the bottom line. And, and it's, it's, it's that step in the right direction of electrification. It's a beautiful fit. And I get the uh, impression sometimes that Thomas is looking to sabotage his own pro, pro, uh, product just by acknowledging that Cummins has come out with a CNG engine that historically has been pr proven to not provide ample horsepower, okay? The hybrid allows for those older engines to be supplemented with that extra horsepower and the fuel savings on the diesel side to be supplemented. It's a beautiful product, Thomas. Stop sabotaging your own product. You've doubled and tripled down on this multiple times and I cringe every time you say it because this is the very product that's going to bridge your success to 2023. Please, Thomas, from a small nook on social media, the Independent Investor Channel, Ryan says, stop doing that. You, you don't even need to talk about it. If it comes to fruition and the hybrid EX is obsolete in five years, so be it. No problem. You don't need to sabotage your own problem and say, yeah, we acknowledge that we're, we're taking all the learnings from it and, and segueing it into the Hypertruck ERX when those five years could provide some critical revenue to bridge to uh, your full electrification solution through the ERX, okay? Number two is his insistence and um, downright infatuation with hydrogen fuel cell. Um, th this is of interest to me. And the last interview was a little much for me. Um, we know that the industry is giddy for hydrogen fuel cell. Uh, I know some physics teachers, actually, that don't think hydrogen is as good as you say that it's going to be. And it's not one of those things that industry is going to just fall on itself to achieve. Um, I'm a, more of a holistic applicator in that 10 years from now, there's going to be a large chunk of the fleets that actually still consume diesel. Not the other way around. Not hydrogen fuel cell is going to dominate 50% of the class eight space. It ain't going to happen. So my Thomas tip for you is double down, triple down on the things that you've been saying all the way up to this point in that hydrogen fuel cell infrastructure does not exist. There are some absolute uh, drawbacks to hydrogen fuel. It is not the magic solution, okay? It is way too expensive, and there is no infrastructure right now. I'm looking at 10 years plus before hydrogen fuel cell and the agnostic solution, which I think is absolutely smart, comes to fruition. I believe that Hylion is going to benefit from being able to offer hydrogen fuel cell into the future, but do not do not speak as if hydrogen fuel cell is the standalone solution that gives Nikola tailwind because they are an hydrogen fuel cell solution provider exclusively. Whereas you are not, you sold everybody on the idea of net carbon uh, negative uh, emissions profiles by talking about RNG, okay? And renewable natural gas is something that is going to be the dark horse in this race. You want to talk about hydrogen fuel cell? Great. Talk about it in a realistic term. But RNG is closer to winning the race than hydrogen fuel cell. That's a fact, Jack. He knows this. Double down on what we know as facts. And I don't know if he's doing it as a sleight of hand and leading people down this idea of, uh, of, of feudal uh, type of uh, application in that he knows hydrogen fuel cell is not going to be the dominant fuel source. I believe that fleets are going to look at their applications and they're going to have four choices. Hydrogen fuel cell. They're going to have uh, CNG, RNG. They are going to have full electrification and they're going to have diesel. And those four applications, I believe, are going to help moderate the amount of pollution that the class eight space is putting off. Now, in 20, 25 years, after those four solutions have had multiple years of being introduced into, into the fleet's application and those bottom line benefits and the real durability factor and the real TCO that's been driven over multiple cycles 
of rolling out different class eight spaces and introducing new trucks and, and new fuel sources to different routes. What's to say that a, an RNG isn't going to be a better application than a, 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 a hydrogen fuel cell application into the future? We, we don't know that. We don't know that. So my Thomas tip is stop putting all of your rhetoric into hydrogen fuel cell when the very solution that you've been so adamant about over the last three years since the inception of Hylion has been the use of CNG RNG in your application. The last thing I'll say is you're cordially invited to be a guest on the channel for an interview exclusive with the Independent Investor Channel. I will not charge you a dime for said interview. I think it would be riveting. I think it would be a huge give back. I think it would dissolve some of the sentiment around Tylion and yourself specifically about not caring about uh, individual shareholders. I, for one, uh, will not buy into that rhetoric. I do not believe that to be the case. I believe absolutely that you care. There's been a few things that you've said in your past about learning to grow thicker skin. Uh, and I've been pretty scathing during certain points of the Hylion evolution. I will admit to that. But most of my scrutiny has been on the edge of being right on the money. Um, your lack of rollout of information and awareness to people gives people the impression that you don't care. And while you're selling stock every single month, it only exacerbates that when your right to sell the stock is, is, is exclusive to your right as a share owner, but it's the optics of the whole thing, Thomas, right? So I cordially invite you on and I appreciate the pressure being put on. Continue to tweet. If you tweet it, I will tweet it back again and I will do a point down. I've been doing that through Twitter. So follow me on Twitter if you enjoy the videos. Um, let's provide a little bit of churn. Let's have a little bit of fun with it. Provide a little pressure, a little pressure on Hylion to come on and, and oblige a free interview uh, from the I2. It's going to be uh, riveting. I'm a good interviewer. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm talking about. I know the numbers in and out, and I know the opportunity in the stock. It'd be a great interview. Um, I would venture to guess that it would be a very worthwhile uh, product for Thomas, uh, and it would take 30 minutes of his time. 30 minutes is all he has to invest in the thousands of patrons that have made their way into the independent investor channel community uh, to uh, get some awareness from my perspective. I think it would be fantastic to have it double down uh, from, from Thomas Healy. That's the Thomas Healy uh, tips of the week right there. Thomas, Thomas, uh, Thomas tips. Uh, as we close down the video here, earnings are right around the corner. It snuck up on us. Uh, be interested to see how they've been able to secure some orders and garner some uh, further revenues against that two to $3 million projection. Uh, if in the first quarter Q1 of 2022, uh, they've garnered 128,000, I'm gonna be pissed. Uh, my expectations for this earnings call, just like the last one, is very, very low, very, very low. Um, the dry, uh, landscape right now with information. Hylion is not uh, garnering uh, pre-orders or pre-reservations or pre-orders with deposits um, with any type of uh, frequency, uh, which is okay. It's not nor a negative or a positive. It just is what it is. They're, they're not winning those businesses. And it's fine. It doesn't mean I don't like the stock or the company. It just means they're not winning that business. Uh, my sentiment going into this quarter is very, very low. Have they been able to garner um, some revenues against that two to three million? And I, I, don't, I don't know, Sherry. I mean, we put ourselves against the grid a little bit on this one, two to three million in a year that is going to rest solely on um, uh, hybrid EX sales. I don't know where you're seeing that in your CRM, but uh, I hope hopefully uh, it's telling you something that is realistic in nature because I don't, I don't see it happening. I don't. Uh, I mean, we were supposed to garner 8 million in revenue last year and we garnered zero. You're projecting two to three million after a year that we uh, were able to only garner two hundred thousand. I, I don't see where it's going to come from. Uh, please prove me wrong. And these are some of the things that I'm going to be looking at on the earnings call. Um, they have tr uh, put together a track record of building up to these earnings calls and and releasing the information on earnings. I have no problem with that. Um, Jason asked him about that. Hey, why don't you just release information as it comes through? I don't think it matters either way. I think positive uh, information falls on deaf ears as far as the market goes anyway. So why not just roll it out at the earnings call, put a little bit of a positive spin on the earnings call because uh, earnings is probably going to be uh, irrelevant. Now, if they turn out a million 
of revenue in the first quarter. That's going to get my attention. So we're talking on the low end of 250. They better be in that range. They better beat this quarterly uh, in, in what they were able to garner in 2021. Uh, they, they better beat that in, in the first quarter because you know they're not going to be able to accelerate to two to three million uh, by, 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 by magic. It's not going to happen. Um, the, 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 the fact of the matter is the sales team needs to go to work and they need to start to generate these so we can make sure that we can navigate these bridging years and get us into uh, fleet trials and demos and the uh, certification, as well as the ramp up of uh, sales uh, it's through commercialization back half of 2023, guys. So uh, earnings call coming up May 9th that snuck up on us. May 9th, set it on your calendars, guys. I really appreciate you tuning in to this highly on update. Sorry, I missed the last week. I was on vacation, uh, but uh, I roll these out with uh, uh, extreme frequency. Love doing it. Um, I will not in any way waver in my opportunity. Sometimes I'm bearish on the company. Sometimes I'm positive. Some people are bothered by that. I don't really care, okay? You need to understand, I really tried to touch on what investing means for people. And people need to do a better job in, in understanding what investing means for them, okay? I can help you with that. And for all the scrutiny that I catch through social media, it's for those people that really do understand it. They don't mind the long-winded videos. They don't mind it because they understand what I'm trying to do here. If you don't like it, go somewhere else throw your stones and go somewhere else. I have no problem with that. Okay. I have no love lost at all. All right. Go ahead and subscribe to the message. Leave your comments at the bottom of the video, share the message, go on to Twitter, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Twitter. Okay. Make the charge to Hylion to seek out an interview with the independent investor. If they have trouble finding it, all they have to do is Google it. I'm the first one that comes up. I am not hard to find on social media. It's an open invitation. Send that tweet over. I'd love to see a couple hundred tweets go in there because I think this whole like five or six tweets, eh, big deal. I appreciate every one of them. It's not a big deal. We need to have a few hundred requests come in. Let's flood them over again, man. It's all good. Power of social media gives us all a voice. And I don't mind representing that voice for you guys. If you're willing to take a little bit of ownership in this process and, 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 and kick over there, it'll cost you nothing, a little bit of time. Put a little bit of pressure on Hylian to accept my uh, invitation here through social media because I have stopped soliciting that directly uh, of Hylian. If not, we're going to continue to drumbeat. We're going to continue to push this vision forward uh, into uh, the future. We're going to continue to share what it is that I know from my perspective. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the message and good luck in your investment future.